Hi, my name is Renee Black, and I am uh, the executive director of a Canadian nonprofit called Peace Geeks. And uh, in general, we work with grassroots organizations in developing in post-conflict areas. I come at this work from having worked on the Women, Peace, and Security agenda at the UN uh, historically and wanting to see how we can empower grassroots organizations and individuals so that they can make a greater impact in their communities. Um, although we ge generally work on more protracted situations, we're also a member of the Digital Humanitarians Network for about the last year and a half, and we've been um, uh, uh, proud to work alongside many of the other organizations that are working in the space to bring uh, technology to bear on, on um, um, emergencies. So in the last, recent, last little while, we've worked on two different projects. Um, uh, one was the services advisor application, and the second is the healthcare facilities um, activation uh, responding to the Ebola crisis. So I'll tell you a little bit about those. Uh, the, UN, the services advisor uh, project came about um, as a request through the, uh, the, the UN High Commission for Refugees, and the, and the, the issue in this case was um, there were the problem identified in this case is that refugees um, living in Jordan, uh, Syrian refugees living in Jordan, of which there are about 620,000 today, um, lack information around how to get access to the services that can help them to to uh, to um, improve their access and, and quality of life. Um, the solution that we ended up coming up with was a tool called, uh, that, that was um, proposed was a tool called Services Advisor. And this application is around trying to provide a one, one um, stop uh, place in order to find information about the different organizations that are providing services. Um, there are 60 dif different organizations that are operating on the ground in Jordan, um, located in over 420 locations. And so how do you improve that access through information? And so uh, the back end of this tool is something called Activity Info, um, and, and it, is, uh, it is updated by the humanitarian organizations that are working on the ground. This is the default view, which is the map view of the project, um, and you can see that you can um, uh, look out at, at, at a particular um, map and see the different uh, types of organizations. Uh, this is a list view of the application that was developed, so it has a summary uh, in this case of all the different water point accesses uh, in order uh, for somebody to find out where to get that information. Uh, in addition, there's, a, there's an organization view, so you can see um, the, the summary data on the, on the left side as well as the more detailed information, which includes whether or not an individual requires a referral, what the hours of operation are, and anything else they might need in order to be able to get access to that service. Um, there's a f number of different f uh, filtering functions that are within here as well, and so you can search by category, uh, by organization, by governance, as well as um, uh, other factors, including um, uh, the proximity as well as referral requirements. Um, so the, the, some of the conversations that have been ha we've been having next are around um, how to expand this out not only to other Syrian refugees but also potentially to other um, refugee populations uh, outside of that context as well as looking at how to expand the functionality of this tool. The second project that I'm going to talk about briefly is um, the healthcare facilities activation, which has been led by um, the Standby Task Force, um, which uh, Perrin and Jess uh, in the audience here um, have been uh, helping out with, uh, along with a number of other organizations. Um, and the challenge here is around um, how do you um, improve access to information to medical, uh, medical professionals and first responders who are trying to make decisions quickly around where to send patients who have been affected by Ebola? So the, um, there's two phases uh, that have been identified recently. One, one which was recently completed was around how to, um, was around listing all the facilities that are in the bowl affected countries. And the second is uh, maintaining that list um, and including information around the beds and so on. Um, there are a number of challenges that have arisen in, in actually producing this, including the lack of mobility in the country, uh, lack of reliable in internet, um, <clears throat> and lack, lack of reliable maps and so on. Um, but nevertheless, um, over, the, over the course of a number of weeks, um, th uh, over 3,500 uh, uh, health facilities were documented, um, of which um, uh, 1,000, I think, have yet to be geolocated. And so that's an, an active project that's going on if anybody's interested in supporting that effort. Um, and the next steps include uh, improving access to this information, producing some printable and downloadable maps for use for, for group, groups on the ground, and continuing to categorize this information um, and, and refine the information so that it can be used uh, more effectively. So a few qu final questions that are on my mind at this point in time with, with these two service-oriented um, projects are around how do you go about evaluating impact of a project like this, especially where there's very limited resources, and how can we build on these types of tools going forward so that we can be more effective 
active in similar situations in the future. Uh, the Service Advisor project can be downloaded on GitHub, and um, there is also a self-organized session on the Ebola response, which will be taking place at 11.30 on Sunday if anybody's interested. Thank you.